All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Kerbo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Blinding Light Levels mod, which is being made by forum user RJVB09. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is not just one new solar system for you to explore, but indeed two new solar systems with a lot of planets and moons that are just wonderful. Now this is part of the Light Levels a series of planet packs that our JVB09 has released and I gotta say I think this one might be my favorite of them. So let's uh, jump into the tracking station and have a look at what we do get. Now while zooming out to the new extent of our known galaxy I of course do need to mention that you are going to need Copernicus for this to work because, well, it is a planet pack. And as you can see, we get our two lovely new star systems here of Rygos as well as Ruger or Rauger? I'm going with Ruger. Money has not only with the two new star systems, but with fun little unique icons for each. And those icons also do carry over to the planets as well, which is pretty darn cool. So let's start over here in the Rigo solar system, where if we zoom in, you can see we have a number of wonderful planets and moons and a really, really bright star, which of course goes by the name of Rygos. Now, this baby is quite large at 125,190 kilometers in radius, being a star that, you know, makes sense. It does have a gravity, though, of 1.15 Gs and an atmosphere, but, you know, again, being a star, not one you're going to want to go and explore. Now, moving on quickly to the first of our planets, because we've got a fair few of them, we're going to have a look at Ben. Now this thing is super close to Rygos and has that wonderful oblong shape to it and size-wise is 400 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 1.93 Gs and does surprisingly have an atmosphere. You'd have thought it'd be burned off by that giant star, but there it is. Now after Ben, we have the planet of Taros. Now, Taros is a little bit larger at 550 kilometers in size with a gravity of 0.84 Gs and does have an atmosphere. And I gotta say, I really do love the coloring on this particular planet. It is quite gorgeous. And it's got a moon. And that is the small little moon of Gert. Now, Gert is 180 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0.152 Gs with no atmosphere, but I do love the look of it, especially that one particular impact point there. That's just this nice splash of color in just the whole rocky terrain of that world. Now, after Gert, we have the glorious gas giant of a Termina, which is pretty large there at 7,000 kilometers in size with a gravity of a point. 59 G's and of course is a gas giant so it's got an atmosphere but you're not gonna be going in it anytime soon and again like with some of the other things on this uh, pack gorgeous coloring on this I really do like it and it of course does have a couple of moons uh, the first of which being Erto, a small little rock with a radius of just 70 kilometers, with a gravity of 0.065 Gs, and no atmosphere to speak of. It is just a gray, lifeless rock. Now, after that, we've got a little bit more interesting of a moon with Tempora. Now, this is a lot larger at 400 kilometers in size. It has a gravity of a point 71 G's and does have an atmosphere and as you can see on here it's got forests and oceans and the whole shebang I really do love this one I actually think this might be my favorite planet in the pack as it is just beautiful after that though we move on to another gas giant by the name of Gosa now this one is a 1600 kilometers in radius with quite a massive gravity of 5 G's and does have an atmosphere but again gas giant yeah don't go exploring it 
another beautiful planet color wise and of course i love it because it has rings they are pretty faint but they are rather lovely and makes me wonder why i love tempora more than this you'd think i'd like gosa but i really do like tempora it's a beautiful planet now of course this one also does have some moons the first of which being lilk which is a 100 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0.09 g's with a no atmosphere to speak of and it's got some nice coloration to it for a rocky planet with a lot of nice canyons in it as well pretty darn cool we also though have the moon of Mago, a bit larger at 210 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0.17 g's and does have an atmosphere giving it kind of a purplish hue which is quite nice and it has a lot of really awesome mountains on it some going seemingly i believe above the atmosphere it's actually quite cool i really really do enjoy this rocky world now, moving on from there, we have the next planet, and the last planet in this star system, of Piotr? That J in there really throws me off. I'm going to go with Piotr. And it has a radius of 150 kilometers, with a gravity of 0.11 Gs, and no atmosphere on this one, just being a sort of cold, gray, dead world. Now, after that, we do, of course, move on to our next star system of Ruger, which, as you can see here, has just a couple of planets to its name, not as many as uh, the previous system. But the big difference between these is, oh my, the star is huge, and of course that star is the... Rauger, Ruger, I, I still really don't know how to pronounce that one, but it is massive at, oh god, 61,773,560 kilometers in radius. But amazingly, with a gravity of 0 0.00004 Gs. But hey, it does have an atmosphere, but again, that whole star thing going on, yeah, don't go to it. But boy, is this thing massive and looks solid from the modeling there. Very odd, but very awesome. And then we move on to the first planet in this system by the name of Cole. Now, this is quite tiny in comparison at 100 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0.1 g's and no atmosphere. It's just a nice lifeless rock with a or an orange hue to it thanks to that just massive star. Now, next we move on to the uh, planet of Ufer, which is quite a bit larger than the last at 800 kilometers with a gravity of 1.2 g's and again no atmosphere on this one another lifeless rock but with a lot more pop marks all over the place makes it a little bit more interesting to me some very nice terrain on it and this one has a moon that being quilia I think that's how you say that one. Boy, the names on this keep getting me. But this one is 300 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0.26 Gs and does have an atmosphere and is a water world. The whole thing's just ocean and that's just glorious. I really do like that. Send your interstellar boats to Qualia good times good times indeed now after that we hit the last of the planets for this little star system with a massive star and that's spull it is 220 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0.2 g's does have an atmosphere which you know makes it sort of the odd man out in this star system and just looks pretty cool i like the browns and oranges from the star it's got some nice canyons and whatnot a very nice indeed and has two moons which are amusingly named this is the planet of spull we then have the moon of Roll, which is 70 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0 0.095 Gs with no atmosphere and just a nice rocky gray moon. And finally, we have the moon 
of wool. Keeping with that whole naming convention going of spole, roll, and wool, this one is a little bit larger at 80 kilometers in radius with a gravity of 0 0.07 Gs. And again, no atmosphere. A little bit uh, less on the topography on this one, but does have some cool canyons and a few really awesome craters. Now, here's the thing, though, about these lovely star systems with all their planets, moons, and, of course, the two beautiful stars, especially the gigantic one. If we actually quickly go back to our star system, well, at the edge of our star system, there's added in, as you can see, well past Elu, a lovely wormhole. There we go, finally zoomed enough. Now this is the wormhole WH2561A, and it is a wormhole that connects to several other wormholes that are within the other star systems. If we actually zoom on uh, back out, uh, we have two different wormholes that are over in the star system of Rigos. If we zoom back in here to see the full extents of the system. You can see these two purple orbits with their very unique little icons. Those are two separate wormholes. We've got WH5103A as well as WH2561B. Both are quite nice, of course, teleporting to various uh, other wormholes. And the uh, final wormhole, of course, is over in the Ruger system, which only has one compared to the two in the previous. And there it is right there. Again, nice to have those in there. I love the unique icons for these things. They are quite cool. And give you a little bit of an easier path towards making it to the star systems. So you don't quite have to make it all the way from Kerbal all the way out here. If, say for instance, you don't have any mods installed that add you faster than light engines or something along those lines, those wormholes give you an opportunity to make it to them with just the normal stock engines, which is pretty nice. I, I do enjoy that. Personally, I usually have a mod like Interstellar installed or the warp drive mod, etc., which are fun, and I'll just probably use those, but a lovely option. Now, let's head back on over to Tempora and my blinding light levels craft that I've got out there in orbit. As I gotta say, even though, yeah, we do have that one gas giant with rings, this one is definitely my favorite world in this pack. It is just simply beautiful and a perfect world for you to go and set yourself up a nice little colony with a gorgeous view of uh, that gas giant over there and of course a nice bright white star in uh, the distance it's a very very awesome world that i yeah definitely definitely think is the coolest one in the pack at least with my personal opinion there and all in all this blinding light levels mod as i said in the beginning is of the three light level planet packs this one by far my favorite it has a great variety of planets i like actually being able to see <laughs> as compared to the much darker other two that exist those are fun i love those planet packs but you know not having to constantly have on lights is convenient uh and i gotta say that ruger star is by far the largest star I have ever seen in this game and is simply magnificent. So if you'd like to have a look at this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this episode. Hopefully you all have enjoyed and you do come back for the next one. Hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time... Thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.